Rishi Sunak has been warned against turning the Conservatives into the even nastier party after he backed his deputy party chairman telling migrants who don't want to live on a barge they should f asterisk 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 off back to France. Number 10 defended Lee Anderson but his words were met with horror by many in his party unnerved by a lurch to the right on immigration. Tory MPs branded him a fascist who is peddling cheap populism. Dominic Grieve, the ex Attorney General who was the Conservative MP for Beaconsfield in Buckinghamshire for more than two decades, told The Independent that such foul language would turn off floating voters and risked making the Tories the even nastier party. It came as, Boris Johnson ally and ex-minister Zach Goldsmith said he is, very tempted, to support Labour at the next election. Minister Robert Jenrick was forced to reject Mr. Anderson's verdict that the Tory party had, failed, on immigration. Ministers were told they risked sending an appalling signal after Mr. Jenrick hinted at quitting the European Convention on Human Rights over Rwanda. Ex-Labour MP Diane Abbott deleted a tweet about 41 drowned migrants, saying they have indeed f asterisk 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 get off. To the bottom of the sea. Major Tory donor Alexander Tamerko, a Ukrainian-born businessman, also expressed concerns, warning the topic of immigration was delicate and calling for more cooperation with France, as he said ministers should be, be more aggressive and decisive in actions rather than words. Mr. Anderson has refused to apologize for his incendiary comments, made after a group of 20 migrants were granted a last-minute reprieve as the first group boarded the Bibby Stockholm barge in Dorset. On those complaining about the accommodation, Mr. Anderson said, if they don't like barges then they should f asterisk 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 off back to France. He was backed by Alex Chalk, the Justice Secretary, who said while the MP's language was salty his indignation is well placed and his comments were not bigotry at all. Number 10 said the cabinet minister had been speaking for the government when he backed Anderson. But a separate row emerged after Mr. Anderson claimed that the party had failed on immigration. That was rejected by Immigration Minister Mr. Jenrick in Downing Street, which said it was making progress, but not complacent. In a separate Tory rift, former Conservative Minister Zach Goldsmith said he was very tempted to back Labour at the next general election. The Tory peer, who recently quit Rishi Sunak's government in a blaze of acrimony, attacked his own party for not having a clear answer to climate change. One senior Tory, a former minister, warned Mr. Sunak against following Mr. Anderson's cheap populism and urged the party to remember, this is as big a problem for France as it is for us. Another former Tory minister told the Independent the comments look chaotic and unsophisticated, which puts Rishi in a slight mess.
Mr. Grieve argued that it was a sad commentary on the current state of the Conservative Party when its deputy chairman resorts to crude and threatening profanities. He also said the silence from the cabinet in condemning Mr. Anderson was deafening and that Mr. Chalk had been dragged down by actively defending the rhetoric. Sir Jake Barry, the former Tory chairman, said, It's not the sort of language I would use, though he agreed with the sentiment of Mr. Anderson's comments which reflect the frustration of the British people. Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick also defended Mr. Anderson, saying he was expressing the deep frustration of the British public. London Mayor Sadiq Khan accused the government of stoking division and hate, while the Liberal Democrats said the government's defense of Mr. Anderson was toe-curling. Chris McKelleny, General Secretary of Alex Salmon's pro-independence ALBA party attacked the broken politics of pound shop Enoch Powell's. Labour's Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper accused the Tories of promoting division and lashing out due to their failures on tackling unlawful migration and the asylum backlog. She told BBC Radio 4's Today programme, It is clearly the wrong language to use and it is ramping up the rhetoric as a distraction from the fact the government is failing. Meanwhile, Mr. Jenrick caused dismay in some Tory circles after hinting the Tories could quit the European Convention on Human Rights, ECHR, if Rwanda flights continue to be blocked. Lord Heseltine told the Independent that pulling out of the convention would send an appalling signal to the world about Britain's view of international law. The former deputy PM said it was part of the Brexit disaster, arguing that the right of the party, no Brexit has failed and is constantly looking for ways to reinforce prejudices. Meanwhile, asylum seekers who refuse to move onto the barge are being threatened with eviction and potential homelessness, as resistance hampers ministers' ambitions to pack 500 people on board. Mr. Jenrick threatened to pull support for anyone who did refuse to go on the barge. If you decline the accommodation that's provided, such as a barge, then we will consider removing your asylum support and that individual will ultimately have to fend for themselves, he told BBC Radio 4. A significant number of asylum seekers who had objected to moving to barge have since changed their minds, he said. We are a generous country, but it is not an a la carte menu from which people can choose the particular hotel or location that suits them best, he said. If you are destitute, then you will accept the decent accommodation the state is able to provide for you. Quote.